In this lesson, I'm going to cover Virtual Fiber Channel. This is a new capability in Windows Server 2012 Hyper-V. Prior to Windows Server 2012, if you wanted virtual machines to be able to directly connect to a storage area network, you would have to use iSCSI, which operates over the TCP IP protocol and your existing network. You would use the iSCSI initiator within the virtual machine's guest operating system to perform that iSCSI connection. With Virtual Fiber Channel, it's now possible for virtual machines to directly connect to a Fiber Channel SAN using the cards in the Hyper-V host. The way this works is, essentially we have the SAN, we have the switches, the host bus adapters connected to the Hyper-V host, and we create a new virtual SAN in Hyper-V. Very similar to the way we create virtual switches for networking. We map it to particular ports available, which creates this virtual SAN. If we have two HBAs in our server, which we normally do for redundancy, we'll create two virtual SANs. We then add to our virtual machines a virtual fiber channel adapter. Most likely, again, we would create two of these connected to the two separate virtual SANs to give us that redundancy. One thing to note is for each of those virtual fiber channel cards, it actually creates two worldwide port names. This is so that during a live migration, the second worldwide port name can be used on the target to avoid any breaking communication. Also note that it is the virtual machines virtual fiber channel adapters that have the worldwide port names that are given permissions to the storage area network. The Hyper-V host itself does not have any direct permission. We have these virtual fiber channel HBAs in the device manager under storage controllers, and we can then map these to many, many different VMs. And with MPIO, you would then get that high availability from within the virtual machine. So this is just a nice new feature if I require the ability to have virtual machines directly communicating to SAN storage. Typically, we do want to be using virtual hard drives, but we cannot share a VHD between multiple virtual machines. So if you wanted to perform some kind of guest clustering and those guests required shared storage, then you would use iSCSI or you would use this new virtual fiber channel capability.